let us now talk about the cascaded if else statement cascaded means a series of if else if else if else if else if kind of statements so let's say we have a problem where we want to determine if a number is positive negative or zero so how would we go about doing such a problem first what we will do is we will ask the user enter a number once the user enters the number we will first check whether the number is equal to zero if the number is equal to zero then the message is going to be printed zero is entered or the number is zero if this condition is false that means the number is not zero i will come to the else if condition else if number is greater than zero then the number has to be a positive number so if this is true it will print positive number in case the number is neither zero nor positive then the number must be a negative number because there is no other possibility then the else statement will say print negative number so if i had to write a c program to implement this particular logic so it would be quite simple so what the c program does is it displays if an input number is positive negative or zero so first i'll declare a variable int number similar to here enter a number i am asking enter a number read a number i am reading a number from the user using the scanf here i am checking if number is equal to zero here i am saying if number equal to zero print zero is entered now if this condition happened to be false i would have come here if else if number greater than zero print f positive number or finally it would have just been a negative number and my code would have altered so let's say i enter the number 3 so number is 3 is 3 equal to 0 this condition is false it will come here else if 3 greater than 0 it is true it will print positive number and it will come here you need to understand a few things the first boolean condition which is true it will execute that block of statements and it will come if it is true here it will not keep checking this because only one of them can execute when you're using a if else if else if else if or else if or else kind of a statement this is known as a cascaded if else if because after if you can have any number of else if statements and you can have only one else statement you can have one if and one else but you can have any number of else if so it looks like a series of if and else if statements that's why it's called as a cascaded else if statement now let's try to understand a few concepts associated with this now in a cascaded if else if else if else kind of a block there are multiple alternative blocks so this is one block this is second block this is third block so these are multiple blocks each of them has a boolean expression here i do not have a boolean expression because either this is true this is true or this has to be true so i do not have a boolean expression here so i have multiple alternate blocks each with a boolean expression now if what he's trying to say is if this is true it will not go and check this and this so the first boolean expression which happens to be true those statements will get executed and i will come back here at the most okay only one block will always be executed you cannot have this and this execute at the same time so this is useful when you are performing a sequence of tests and you want at least one of the tests to be true or false so this is going to be used when there are a series of tests you need to understand this last else is not compulsory it's a optional else you can ignore this else if you want now let's try to take a situation where the if else statements could be used let's say all of us get electricity bill at our home and the problem is simple it is asking us to calculate the electricity bill based on the kilowatt hours or units we use per month now there is also other way lot of electric bills work where they tell you the first say 20 units the rate is say 3 rupees 20 to 40 it is 50 rupees so if you use 100 units the first 
few units will be built at a different rate the next units will be built at a different rate so here what i have is i have a table which tells me that if i have used 0 to 50 units my cost per unit is going to be 3 rupees 51 to 100 it's going to be 4 rupees 101 to 200 it's going to be 5 rupees 201 to 300 it's going to be 6 rupees 301 to 500 it's going to be 7 rupees 501 and above it's going to be 9 rupees per unit so if i had to write a cascaded if else if else if statement here it would be quite simple i would say if units greater than or equal to 0 and units less than or equal to 50 i would multiply the units by 3 then the next would be else if units greater than or equal to 51 and units less than or equal to 100 I would multiply units by 4. Similarly, else if units greater than or equal to 101 and units less than or equal to 200, I would multiply units by 5. Else if units greater than or equal to 201 and units less than or equal to 300, I would multiply units by 6. Last else if, else if units greater than or equal to 301 and units less than or equal to 500, I would multiply units by 7.0. Finally, the else statement would be anything above 501 would have automatically been the else statement. I would multiply units by 9.0. So this would have given me my electric bill. Let me show you one more example of a cascaded else if statement. Suppose I want to check if an input character is lowercase, uppercase or is it a digit? I am going to use the concept of ASCII values. So if the ASCII value of the character is greater than or equal to A and ASCII value of the character is less than or equal to Z, I am going to print lowercase letter. Else if ASCII value of the character is greater than or equal to capital A and ASCII value of the character is less than or equal to capital Z, I am going to say uppercase letter. Now, numbers between 0 to 9 are also represented by ASCII values. So, I am saying else if the ASCII value of the character is greater than or equal to 0 and ASCII value of the character is less than or equal to the number 9, it is in this range, I am going to say the input character is a digit. It has to be either lowercase, uppercase or a digit. Otherwise, I am saying the input character is neither alphabet nor a digit. It could be some special character like question mark, equal to and so on. A common mistake which you tend to make is if you are comparing, don't do something like this. You cannot say if character greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to character 9. Here the ch must come like this. If you miss the ch, you will get a compile time syntax error. So you will get more clarity on all of these statements when we go ahead and solve a number of examples live.